Conesty, how are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast and to the episode 159, Care Tawnock, the story of the mother of the devil himself. But before that, and Sorka's fresh retelling of this old myth, we want to give a shout out to all our Patreon supporters who've gone to patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales and help us out with throwing a little bit of bob in there or the PayPal button on our website candlelittales.ie find out more about us and our live gigs on our Instagram socials or website thank you now Sarika tell us the story will you there's a rhythm to the world birth life death and birth again or rebirth It's a rhythm that's bigger than any one person. Any one entity. People live and die. So do nations. Tribes. So do ideas. The idea of the Fianna was an idea of people, made by people, believed in by people, almost a little worshipped. The idea of a place outside the tribe, a place outside the clan, who is still worthy and noble and valiant and those who were discarded could pick themselves up and dust themselves off and say, well, I discard you and find a purpose. That on the margins, there is nobility and grace and courage. And when that idea came to its fullest fruit, it began to die. Because when it came to ripen, it was the golden child. It was Fionn McCool, who so embodied the promise of the Fianna. that it became inextricable from the idea of him. And he was huge, not physically, not really, but the idea of him was huge. So noble, so wise, so knowledgeable. So perfect so perfectly in line with what that group could be, should be. And by making it so, by taking it out of idea and into reality, long before the cracks began, it began to die. It would become a legend. But to be a legend, something must no longer exist. I do not know if Fionn understood this. Perhaps a part of him did. He was, after all, very wise. He had tasted the flesh of the other world, and that gave his gifts. But whether he knew it or not, that was what he did. The idea was precious and he lived for a long, long time. Far longer than he had any right to. He made his mistakes. He pushed too far. He asked for too much. 
And in the end, I turned my face away from him. I turned my other face towards him. And he lost everything. Little by little, drop by drop, until there was nothing left. And if he lived after the Battle of Gaura, it was not as Fionn McCool. Fionn McCool walked away that day and was no more. Too long a life. Too long an ideal. I remember Fiona became a dream, less than a dream at first. You do not understand the value of a thing until well after it is gone. But eventually, an idea, an ideal again, but one now tinged with loss and sorrow and tragedy and all the more seductive for it. And there was loss. After they left. After that time passed. It was less to hold people together. It was more to divide them. There was no one watching over them, no guardian. What they needed, I decided, was more to fight against. Perhaps that would turn their attention away from each other. And so I sent them, my children. I'd often sent the Fianna, my children. My children made them strong. My children tempered them. Tempered their pride. Let them understand that they were not the inheritors of this earth. I am. My children are. The pastes, the worms, the serpents. With their teeth, and their venom, and their flame. They called me the mother of the devil. Different idea. But I took it. It was the worst thing they could imagine. And the worst thing they could imagine had to have a mother. I suppose I did not see it either at the time. How they were making me real enough to kill. The idea of something vast and scaled and malevolent. A place to put all of their fears. All that terror that they too will one day die. One by one. No matter how they struggle against one another, against themselves. They struggle towards it. The waiting jaws of death. They might make sure to be remembered like Fionn McCool. But even he was gone. And there I came. And I became. An enemy. A terror. I don't know if I lost anything in that translation. I suspect I might. There are parts of me unnamed. I have many faces. Some are even sweet. But the name they came to know me by was Kertanok. The name I answered to. Though none were so unwise as to call me. And for a time on the island, I ruled. Not as queen or king, but as the Fianna had ruled. An idea. 
Theirs was light and mine was shadow. Theirs was life and mine was death. Theirs was adventure, high-hearted and noble. Mine was adventure, the one you do not come back from. Theirs was courage. Mine was terror. I suppose there had been both for a while. Now there was only me. I reveled in it. I did not see. At some point I had been born, and now I lived. And where does that lead? Only one way. I did not know that boy was carrying my death with him when the slavers brought him to the shore. I did not know my time was coming to an end. Better that I did not. Had I known... I would have destroyed the child. Had I seen it, I would have ended him before he could end me. But of course, that would not be fitting. There is a cycle that I respect, that I am part of too. Although, I see myself, I saw myself, as more of an enforcer than a subject. I cannot escape it. To try would have been an error. One I would have made. And so, no, it is better. The child, the boy, he brought a new idea. There was something truly strange at the heart of his idea. As useful as he was, in reminding me of my place. Something truly odd. It was called eternity. The idea that beyond the cycle is another place, a place of stillness, a place of certainty, a place that does not move, that does not change, that does not end, forever and ever and ever. Of course, we only had one conversation. Not spoken. Not a conversation of words, a conversation of action. By his actions, he asked me and my children to leave. By my actions, I said no thank you. By his actions, he hunted me. By my actions, I poisoned him. And in the end, when I faced him, I saw my death in his face. I understood. My time had come to an end, and then he showed me his idea. Then he introduced me to his certainty, to eternity, to a place unchanging. Not a bad place. Lakes of fire. People to torment. Quite pleasant, if I may say so. But it does not change. And that cannot stand. I wonder how his idea fares. If it lives still in the world above. If it has begun to crack and shatter. As old ideas before it. Or if it still feels everlasting, as Fionn McCool did in his prime. I wonder if the next step in the cycle is to be honoured. If there will be a time when I can return. Perhaps I will show one of my gentler faces. A soft reminder. Humanity is part of the cycle, not above it, not beyond it. 
And just because they can imagine eternity does not make it so. There is a gate. I do not think it was here before. But there is a gate. And if there is a gateway, there must be a way to open it. And so I wait. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all the social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales, or send us a message to get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist, hashtag Candlelit Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channels really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with any questions, requests or comments, leave them in the section below. If you want to find out about our courses, anything like that, just drop us a line. And we especially appreciate you listening.